Hi and welcome back to freesciencelessons.co.uk. By the end of this video you should be able to describe how paper chromatography can be used to identify substances in a mixture. We've been looking at the four ways that scientists use to separate mixtures. We've seen filtration, crystallization and distillation including both simple and fractional distillation. Another separation technique used by scientists is called chromatography. This is really useful and there are several different ways of carrying this out. In this video we're going to look at paper chromatography, so let's get started. Paper chromatography allows us to separate substances based on their different solubilities, so let's look at an example. Imagine I have a collection of coloured pens such as these. I want to know which pens contain only one colour and which pens contain a mixture of colours. We take a piece of special paper called chromatography paper and we draw a pencil line near the bottom like this. Next we put a dot of our first colour onto the pencil line and next to that we put a dot of our second colour. We can do this for several colours as long as there's enough space on the paper. We now place the bottom of the paper into a solvent. Remember that a solvent is a liquid that will dissolve substances and there are lots of different solvents. Now here's a really important part. The solvent now makes its way up the paper and it dissolves the ink in the two coloured dots and these are now carried up the paper as well. Now here are a couple of facts that you need to learn. We call the paper the stationary phase because that does not move and we call the solvent the mobile phase and that's because the solvent moves. So after a while the paper could look like this. As you can see the red colours form the single spot here. Because there's only one spot we know that red is a single pure colour. However you can see that colour B has now separated into two different spots and that tells us that colour B was actually a mixture of two different colours. So here's another key fact. A pure compound will produce a single spot in all solvents whereas the compounds in a mixture may separate into different spots depending on the solvent. I've shown you that with these two diagrams. These show the experiment again but this time repeated with a different solvent. You can see that the red colour still produces a single spot even if we change the solvent. The position of the spot may change but it's still a single spot. Paper chromatography works because different substances have got different solubilities. A more soluble substance travels further up the paper than a substance which is less soluble. One question which is often asked in exams is why do we draw a starting line in pencil? Well that's because if we drew the line in pen, the pen ink would move at the paper with the solvent. Coming up we're going to see how we can use paper chromatography to identify an unknown substance. Ok, one of the real benefits of chromatography is that we can use it to identify an unknown substance. I've got here a chemical, I don't know what this chemical is and I'm going to find out using paper chromatography. So just like before we place a dot of our chemical onto the pencil line and we place the bottom of the paper into a solvent. So here's where the chemical moves to and again we can see that the chemical is pure as we only have one spot. Here's where the solvent moved to and it's really important that we know that. So the first thing we need to do is measure the distance moved by the unknown chemical. To do that we measure from the pencil line to the centre of the spot. So in this example the substance moved a distance of 44 millimetres. We then measure the distance moved by the solvent, in this case 75 millimetres. We now use these numbers to calculate the RF value for the substance. We divide the distance moved by the substance by the distance moved by the solvent like this. So this gives us an RF value of 0.57 for this substance. Notice that RF values do not have a unit. We can now look this RF value up in a database and that will tell us the identity of the substance. Now I should point out that several different substances could have this RF value, so we might need to repeat this experiment using a different solvent to narrow it down further. Also, if this substance has never been analysed before, then there will not be an RF value on the database, so we'd need to carry out further analysis to identify it. Remember that you'll find lots of questions on this topic in my revision workbook, which you can get by clicking on the link above. Ok, so hopefully now you should be able to describe how paper chromatography can be used to identify substances in a mixture.